A subject that I've enjoyed studying over the years is the issue of the gap theory. Now, in a nutshell, uh, the gap theory, if, just in case you are not aware, is the belief that there is a gap of time between Genesis 1 verse 1 and Genesis 1 verse 2. And that in that gap of time, there was a, some sort of civilization, maybe only angelic beings, some are theorizing uh, a civilization of Neanderthals, some are saying actual humans. But during that time, Satan fell, caused the civilization, civilization to, fall, to fall, and then everyone sinned and God destroyed that civilization with a flood. And they... Um, say that Genesis 1 verse 2 where you find the entire world engulfed in water that was that cataclysmic judgment flood that destroyed uh, the civilization before Genesis 1 verse number 2 so basically that's in a nutshell uh, the gap theory and they use other verses uh, uh, or portions of scripture Jeremiah 4 2 Peter 3 and some others uh, to prove their belief now I don't believe that those who believe in the gap theory uh, I, I don't accuse them of heresy. I can see why they believe what they believe. I don't believe they're heretics. I don't even believe they're hypocrites. Uh, some of the best men we've ever known believed and advocated uh, the gap theory. So it's not an issue of fellowship with me. I'll, I'll fellowship with a man who believes in gap theory. In fact, our church supports a particular missionary uh, who is a gap theorist. And he won't even call it a gap theory. He calls it the gap principle. Uh, and... Uh, uh, so I, I have no issue with a person who believes in the gap theory as far as uh, fellowship with him uh, is concerned. Uh, but I do have an issue with the doctrine itself. I do not believe it's biblical or scriptural. Uh, and one of the ways that gap theorists approach this, and, uh, and as far as most of them are concerned, this is the knockout blow to the, to the young earth theory and uh, what I believe to be the biblical position is the issue of the fall of Satan. When did Satan fall? And you'll find, and, and most of, the, most of the, the gap theorists that I've listened to their videos, I've heard what they've said, most of them very early on in their introductory remarks or in their teaching or in their preaching, uh, they will mention the fall of Satan. And they'll say, uh, you, know, you, you young earth creationists cannot explain the fall of Satan. Uh, and so... Uh, they think that uh, because we believe in the young earth and that there is no gap between Genesis 1, verse 1, and Genesis 1, verse 2, that there's no possible way, there's no place where Satan can fall in the scriptures. And so they say that we cannot explain the issue. In fact, I found a video of a gentleman named Gregory Miller. He's from Ohio. And uh, he basically says this, and he, he puts it in... in uh, in good terms, you're going to get a good understanding of how most gap theorists view uh, the young earth creationist uh, concept of the fall of Satan. This isn't a matter of you're getting along with me or anybody else, but it is a matter that I believe if you don't understand the Genesis gap, you won't be able to answer questions as you're reading through the Bible. You're not going to understand things. I want to refer to one of those things, and that's the fall of Lucifer. Without the Genesis gap and the understanding of this, you really don't have an answer for one major question, and that is this. How many of you read the account of Adam and Eve in the garden? Genesis 3. Did you know sin existed before Eve sinned? Did you know that? Because the way the young earth creationists teach it, you wouldn't believe that. But if you read it, Genesis 3, there is a serpent in the garden sinning lying to Eve, deceiving her, blaspheming, adding to God's Word, deleting from God's Word, perverting God's Word, committing all these different sins, including a liar who is pretending to be a serpent when he's not. Mm -hmm. All before Adam and Eve sinned. How'd that happen? Well, if you take the young earth uh, creationist position, you can't explain that. And they don't even try. They just avoid it. So that's just... So we don't even try, we just avoid the issue. Well, I'm not going to avoid the issue. I want to explain from the Bible when Satan fell and what um, the gap theorists believe is one of their strongest points. The fall of Satan 
and the timing of the fall of Satan, what they believe to be one of their strongest points. In fact, in reality, if you'll study what the Bible actually says about the fall, you'll find out that not only does it not support a gap theory, uh, uh, the gap theory of Genesis 1, 1, and 1, 2, but it destroys it. It obliterates the gap theory. So real quickly, let's run some references and look at the issue of when Satan fell. I'm going to begin in Genesis 2, verse number 8, where the Bible says that the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. So we know in Genesis chapter 2, verse number 8, God planted the garden of Eden. He could not have planted this garden prior to day 3, which you find in Genesis 1, verses 9 through 13. So in Genesis 1, verses 9 through 13, you have vegetation showing up on the planet, and so it could not have been until that day, not before that day, and not until that day could you have possibly the Garden of Eden. So the Garden of Eden was created after Genesis 1, verse 2, and no earlier than day 3, which begins on uh, begins in Genesis chapter 1, verse number 9. But then you go over to Ezekiel 28, and uh, most agree that this passage is speaking about and describing Lucifer before his fall into sin. And uh, in Ezekiel 28 and uh, verse number 12, the Bible says, Son of man, take up a limitation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom, and perfect in beauty. Then verse 13, Thou hast been in the Eden, in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering, and then he continues in the next verse or two to describe the amazing beauty of an, an unfallen Lucifer. And uh, he says in verse 15, Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created, till iniquity was found in thee. So he describes in the section of scriptures the appearance and the beauty and the majesty of Lucifer before he fell. And in the middle of his unfallen description, or the description of his unfallen state, the Bible says that Satan, or Lucifer at the time, was in the Garden of Eden. Well, the Garden of Eden is where God put man. The Garden of Eden could not have been created prior to day three. So, if the Garden of Eden could not have been created before day three, which is Genesis 1 verse 9, then, and, and, and Lucifer was in the Garden of Eden in an unfallen state, that means the fall had to happen after Genesis 1 verse 2, not before. All gap theorists believe that the fall of Lucifer and the angels took place between Genesis 1, 1 and Genesis 1, 2. But review, the Garden of Eden was made after Genesis 1, verse number 2, and Lucifer in an unfallen state was in that garden. Therefore, there's no gap between Genesis 1, 1 and Genesis 1, 2, and there's no necessary gap there to explain the fall of Satan. Uh, the reason why I know there's no gap there is if Satan initiate, initiated sin in the universe and his fall doesn't come until uh, after he was in the garden in an unfallen state, it doesn't come until after Genesis 1 verse number 2, then there was no sin before Genesis 1 verse number 2. And so therefore, there, Genesis 1 verse 2 cannot possibly be describing a judgment flood. There was no sin to judge. Sin does not arrive until after God makes the Garden of Eden and after Lucifer was in the Garden of Eden in an unfallen state. Now, this means that Satan, or at the time Lucifer, was in the Garden at the same time as Adam and Eve. They were in the Garden at the same time. They... they knew each other, I'm sure, probably spoke to each other and fellowship with each other. This would also explain why Satan came in chapter 3 disguised as a serpent. Why do you disguise yourself? You don't want to be recognized. Well, why would they recognize him? Because they knew him. If, if Lucifer comes to Eve, or Satan, fallen Satan, comes to Eve in an unfallen state, she already knows about what happened. She knows about him falling. She knows about his sin. She knew him before he fell. She's been in the garden with him. So if he approaches her 
as he was, she's not falling for that. But he comes as a serpent disguising himself, and now the trickery begins. And so that explains why he disguised uh, himself. I believe this also might explain some of the reasoning behind Satan's fall itself. In Genesis 1, verse 26, the Bible says, God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness. In Genesis 1, 27, uh, he says God, the Bible says God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. And so Genesis 1, 26 and 27 says that, that God made man in his image. Genesis 1, 26 even uses the word likeness. And you remember in Isaiah 14 when it speaks of the fall of Lucifer. You got the five eye wheels of Lucifer. Remember the five eye wheels? In Isaiah 14, verse number 13, here it begins the five eye wheels. I will, Lucifer says, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt, exalt, my, exalt my throne above the stars of God. He had a throne. I will sit also upon the mount of congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. Why is he under the clouds? He was here on earth in the Garden of Eden um, with Adam and Eve. But then the last thing he says, I will be like the Most High. Now think about this. Here's Lucifer, a beautiful creation, and Adam and Eve. Now he's beautiful. But he looks at Adam and he sees something in Adam that he doesn't see in himself. The image of God. The likeness of God. And so I can see that in his beauty, in his jealousy, you see the pride. The motive, one of the motivating factors of his fall may have very well been the fact that Adam was made in the likeness of God. Because he, as Lucifer says, I will be like the Most High. He wanted what Adam had. Now the question then is, well, when did the fall take place? Okay, if 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 Satan or Lucifer in his unfallen state is in the garden, and he's obviously somewhere in Genesis two, he's in the garden. He's not mentioned in Genesis two, but Ezekiel twenty eight said he was there. So he's in the garden of Eden in an unfallen state. Yet in chapter three, you come along and he's fallen. That means the fall must have taken place somewhere between Genesis two and Genesis three. So where should the real gap go? Not between Genesis 1, verse 1, and Genesis 1, verse 2, but between Genesis chapter 2 and Genesis chapter 3. In chapter 2, the Garden of Eden. There's no sin. There's no fall. Ezekiel 28 says Lucifer was there. Genesis 3, Lucifer has already fallen. He shows up in a serpent suit to deceive Eve. The fall has taken place. So somewhere between Genesis 2 and Genesis 3 is the fall. Now, uh, with that said, Lucifer does fall into sin. And before Adam and Eve can begin to multiply, be fruitful and multiply uh, upon the earth, before that can take place, Lucifer gets in there, deceives Eve, Adam falls, and the rest is sinful history. But the fact that Lucifer was in the Garden of Eden. That means he was in there in Genesis 2 in an unfallen state. It also explains why he came in a disguise. Because they would have known him. Adam and Eve were in the Garden of Eden at the same time Lucifer was. So the real gap theory is not between Genesis 1, 1 and Genesis 1, 2. It's between Genesis chapter 2 and Genesis chapter 3. Also, gap theorists need to explain Genesis 1 verse 31. At the end of day six, the Bible says God saw everything that he had made. And that would include Lucifer, angels, everybody. And the Bible says, and behold, it was very good. If, if there was a fall, then somewhere in God's everything that he made, there was some bad. There was sin. Because Lucifer and the fallen angels are floating around somewhere in the universe by the time you get to Genesis 1, verse 31, but the Bible says in Genesis 1, 31, that he looked at everything and said it was good. In fact, he said it was very good. So the fall of Satan could not have taken place before Genesis 1, verse 2. It could not have taken place before Genesis chapter number 2. It takes place somewhere between Genesis 2 and Genesis 3. Now, I'm going to uh, do some more videos like this on some of the other issues of the gap theory 
uh, and the deficiency of it. But I wanted to begin with this one because this is the one they all refer to as this is the coffin, the, excuse me, the nail in the coffin for the young earth uh, believers when in fact the fall of Satan, when you study it scripturally, destroys the belief of the gap theory.